Many of us share our lives with animals. We take care of them and enjoy their companionship. But there is much, much more we can discover from our animals. Our relationships with these wise and loving beings can be so much deeper and richer. Carol Gurney has dedicated her life to learning the language of animals and teaching others how to hear what our animal friends have to say. Here is the story of Timmy and Denny, a horse who felt he no longer had a reason to live, and a person who discovered how deeply animals do feel, how connected they are to their world and to us, and how important it is sometimes to simply stop and listen. One of the most touching cases I had, Denny, was working with you and Timmy. Do you remember the day that you called and what you said? Oh, I remember the vet gave me your name as a last resort, and I called your office um, as Timmy was scheduled for euthanization on Thursday, and this was on a Monday when I called. Yeah. So. Remember you said is he had suddenly developed narcolepsy, which is um, you fall asleep standing up and then you crash to the ground, and charging people at his corral, he wouldn't let anybody in. And you said that was really odd behavior for him. It was totally odd, and um, I didn't know what to do about it. He was almost violent, mm -hmm. and I had had him since he was three years old, and he was 23 at the time, so um, I couldn't believe that he wouldn't even let me near him. But um, yeah. he had just totally he stopped eating, stopped drinking, um, pacing all the time. I mean, just very erratic behavior, um, and had become quite dangerous for anyone going in the stall, which is why I was definitely at the last resort, because I didn't want anyone to be hurt. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the vet had done all he could, and um, we just couldn't get any results. I remember walking up and getting closer to him. He said, I feel so depressed. I feel sad. But it was beyond depression that I started feeling for him. And I remember him saying, I don't want to live anymore. And then he kept projecting an image to me of a mare and then sending me the thought, where is she? Where is she? And then when I asked you, who was this mare? That was the big impact for me and Renee, my girlfriend, because it was her mare yeah. that had been put down and I had not told you any of that. And when you turned around to us and the tears were coming down your face and you said, where is his where is his stable mate? We yeah. were just stunned. Yeah. Um, because it never even entered my mind that that was what was wrong. Because we had put another mare beside him right away. Um, and, you know, I just, it just never occurred to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we were just floored. When you said it was instructed that we take um, Timmy out in pasture, put her down, and then take her body away so that when you brought Timmy back to his stall, she was gone. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the vet yeah. thought that that would be the best way to do it and that we would put another mare beside yeah. him right away so when he came back in there would still be a horse in there. But, yeah. And this is when I really understood the connection that horses have with humans and with other horses and other animals. I, I just went along with it because it sounded like a good plan. Right. But then I realized, you know, after you came out and I, what a mistake that was. In order to help Timmy with that situation, the first thing that I did was apologize to him. I said to him, Timmy, I'm so sorry that they didn't let you say goodbye to Delight, but they didn't know that it was important for you to say goodbye or for animals to say goodbye to, to their friends. I remember telling him the truth of what happened to Delight because that was the missing part for him. Sharing with him that she was sickly, that she was in pain, and that you all felt it was the best thing for her if you put her down. So one, they apologize for him on behalf of people, and then what I did is share the truth about where Delight was. I then also said, I think that there's much for you to live for. Mm. I said, I know your person has learned so much from you. I know that um, you can teach her much, much more. So I remember turning to you and saying, you know, Denny, it's going to be really important for you to tell him how has he enriched your life? Um, what have you learned from him? And then what do you hope to continue to learn from him in the future? So I'm curious to know, what did you say to Timmy and how did that feel to you? You told me because he was so distraught in the corner of his corral, I would never come forward. Just take a chair and sit down in front of the corral mm -hmm. and just talk to him. 
-hmm. I did tell him how important he is to me, mm -hmm. an important, integral part of my life. Yeah. He gives, gave so much to me. Then I remember you telling me, just get a book and start reading out of it. So he hears <laughs> your voice. So I got chicken soup for the soul <laughs> and I started reading him chapters. It was only a, a couple of days and I could feel his breath on the back of my neck. So he had mm. come forward. Mm. And, um, and it was just a really joyful time for me because as soon as that happened, um, he was basically getting back to his normal self again. It just totally made a difference. I mean, it gave Timmy five more years of life. Wow. wow. And then did, did things happen? Did he change that behavior uh, pretty quickly? It was overnight, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely. By the next day, um, I could go in the corral with him. He started eating again. It was just an incredible difference, almost immediate. It amazes me the breadth and the depth of the emotions that animals have. Right. And for instance, for Timmy, that was all emotional. Oh, it was. And for it to manifest physically into narcolepsy, right? You know, into charging people. Yeah. You know? And that's where everybody focuses usually on the on the physical. Right. We can see how animals experience the same range of emotions that we do, such as depression, grief confusion, joy, disappointment, and anger, to name a few. And Carol reminds us that animals are no different from us. They just happen to be in different bodies. And then we can see when Timmy knows the truth, hears the apology, and then knows from you that he has enriched your life and how yeah. he's done that, the lessons he's taught you, that gave him the desire to live again, to, exactly. to continue that relationship with you. Well, and I, and I was able to tell him how much I needed him in my life. Yeah. And, you know, I learned so much from that. And, and in my other experiences with my horse, nothing, it's just changed exa every way that I think. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really been a wonderful change for me. And, yeah. I, and it's been a, allowed me to give so much more back mm -hmm. to my animals. The experience for you, it sounds like it's impacted your future relationship. Did it change your perception of who animals are? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just had, I mean, I, I've always really cared about them mm -hmm. and all, but mm -hmm. I just had no idea what their perception is. Mm -hmm. um, for emotionally, I just had no idea. And I'd been around horses for 35 years and thought I knew them really well, but I mean, there was a whole aspect that I was totally missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now I have that, and it's really helped me in my other relationships with all my other animals. Did you learn anything about love from this? Well, uh, just the emotional attachment that, mm -hmm. you know, horses can have with other horses, people can have with horses. I mean, there's just so much there to give. People think, you can't get any type of a real connection yeah. with them, but it's so wrong. You, you totally mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. And it's totally opened my eyes for sure. Well, it helped me tremendously to see the breadth of the emotions that animals experience. And again, how their emotions can manifest into a physical um, ailment right. and, and behavior. And the fact that, you know, Timmy was going to be euthanized. And a smart vet to say, call, because maybe, yeah. maybe there's another component to this. So. Well, he's very open-minded and thank goodness yeah. because, you know, yeah. I don't know that too many others would have done that. And um, yeah. it just totally opened up a whole avenue to me that I didn't know I had. Yeah. And it definitely saved to me from yeah. being euthanized, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad I came up. <laughs> I'm very glad, yeah. And it was so great to meet you and you've been a part of my life since and yeah. Yeah. it's just been wonderful. This story of Timmy and Denny the story of the love and bond between an animal and a person can happen every day for all of us. Our animals have so much to tell us. All we need to do is stop and listen. We all have the ability to do this. We can all talk to our animals just as Denny did, and we can all open our hearts and experience the unconditional love and learn the lessons our animal friends have to teach us. Thank you for listening. Those of you interested in learning how to be an animal communicator can go to Carol's website at Thank you all for listening. Bye for now.